Groucho Marx's performance in the classic film Animal Crackers had America laughing more than 70 years ago. Today, 30 years to the day after his death, fans of Groucho and of the other Marx brothers are laughing still. Oh, you suckers who are going to get trimmed, step this way for the big swindle. Do you know this guy? What's that? He wants his shape. Make a note of that. They may be America's most famous foursome. Hey, do, do, do. What are you boys giving me the runner out? And certainly the funniest. In a case like this, that's a soul. There's Chico with his bogus Italian you accent. Use of the Sherlock Holmes are Now you go about them like this. How do you do? Harpo, who lets a horn do the talking. And a harp do the singing. He was the silent type in all the Marx Brothers movies. Zeppo was the straight man. Pardon me, is this yours? Why no. Calling all nations, this is Rufus T. And of course, the one and only this is Rufus Groucho. Rufus Firefly with a hey na na and a hot cha cha. The look, the lope. The legend, the man who made the Marx Brothers, the Marx Brothers. One morning, I shot an elephant in my pajamas. How he got in my pajamas, I don't know. Groucho was a very significant artist and an American artist, and someone who is uh, really precious to us, an original. Actor Elliot Gould says his performance in the 1970 film Mash was influenced by Groucho. Lieutenant, I think I can save you. Look, take one of these every half hour. Now get into your helicopter and button up your shirt for crying out loud. You're in the military army. The two became friends when Marx was almost 80 and Gould just over 30. Groucho would let me uh, shave him with his electric razor late in the morning. He'd be fully dressed, standing up, watching reruns of Burns and Allen and Jack Benny. Gould says what made Groucho great was his ability to find humor in anything, anything. Death, for example. Somebody said to Groucho, I, I think it was on the on news, how would you like to be remembered? And Groucho said, preferably alive. Gentlemen, Ciccolini here may talk like an idiot and look like an idiot, but don't let that fool you. He really is an idiot. Perhaps I at the core him. of the Marx Brothers' genius was a defiance of authority, social, political, you name it. They were basically anarchists. That's what they did. They took an institution and they attacked it in every way that they possibly could. Comedian and producer David Steinberg. The movie that they're most well known for is Duck Soup because that's an anti-war film. Your Excellency, we can't hold out much longer. We must have help. They always went at something. Do you know who sneaked into my stateroom at 3 o'clock this morning? Who did that? Nobody, and that's my complaint. I Monkey business was on a ship. Class differences is what they dealt with. Steinberg helped write the play Minnie's Boys about the Marx Brothers and the Marx Mother. Groucho was born in 1890 in New York City. The family was Jewish and they were broke. Their mother, Minnie, was the stereotypical stage mom, pushing her boys into vaudeville while they were still kids. They eventually became popular and by 1924, they'd made it to Broadway with three straight hits, including the shows Coconuts and Animal Crackers. Both plays were made into movies. Groucho, here he is playing doubles against Charlie Chaplin, saw his reputation grow with each new movie. And a loyal legion of fans, make that fanatics, endures to this day. Wait a minute, wait a minute, this isn't legal. There's no seal on it. Where's the seal? 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 Do you know wh wh whether Groucho Marx was indeed a funny man in person? I mean, did, did he... Oh, I, I'm, I'm, he, was. he was. He was. I think I've seen that? horse feathers about 28 times, and that, that qualifies me as a, a, a fanatic. Harold uh, Meyerson is also think, a Washington Post a columnist and executive editor of the magazine The American Prospect. What are some of your, mo your favorite, very favorite scenes? If you look at something like the viaduct scene in Coconuts. Now here is a little peninsula, and uh, here is a viaduct leading over to the mainland. Why a dog? I'm all right, how are you? I where he and Groucho sit down and get every possible permutation and combination out of a series of mispronunciations and bad puns, more than anyone's ever done in one scene. Right. Why a dog? It's why, why a dog? Why are no chickens? 
Uh, I don't know why I know chicken. I'm a stranger here myself. All I know is uh, the, the greatness of the two of them together just becomes uh, overwhelming. I, I don't think anyone is better, has better combined physical and verbal comedy than Groucho Marx. I mean, he's really an incredible athletic performer. The zeal and, uh, of some fans, wins. like Frank Ferranti, goes beyond mere obsession. Ferranti has parlayed his love of Groucho into a career. Are you expecting somebody? He's played the comic about 2,000 times in the play, A Life in Review. Want some ice water? Look, tell to peel an onion. That'll make her eyes water. There was a guy my age in his early 40s that came up to me at the end of the night. He says, you're the guy. I said, what do you mean by that? He goes, you're the guy. We all wanted to be Groucho, but you're the guy that got to be Groucho. Groucho got to be Groucho in so many legendary scenes. It's understandable why fans still argue over which is the very best. Many shout bravo for the famed opera satire in Night at the Opera. Others prefer the legendary stateroom scene in the same movie. Tell me, are you alone? But there's no debate over the leading lady. What, you don't understand being alone? Don't give me that innocent stuff or you'll be alone. <laughs> A big cluck like you turning cute on me. Margaret Dumont symbolized for them the, the, this sort of genteel propriety, the last vestiges of Victorian culture. But she, she played them perfectly, right? She, didn't, she would not uh, join in the merriment. No, to the, in fact, to the contrary, Groucho later said that Margaret Dumont never understood the jokes. But audiences did. Groucho Marx. And they followed Groucho to that fledgling medium, television, where he found a second calling as host of the wildly popular TV quiz show, You Bet Your Life. And now, here he is, the one, the only... The first fan of You Bet Your Life was Groucho, and he loved that show. When Author Charlotte Chandler wrote about Groucho after befriending him in his later years. I remember one of the things he always said was, is it sad or high kicking? And he said that was his philosophy of life, and that it was important in life to make it as high kicking as you could. He was high kicking to the end. Though his health declined, his spirits never did, nor his trademark brand of humor. David Steinberg remembers a restaurant lunch when Groucho was recognized by a priest. He said, oh, Mr. Marx, we didn't see you. I, 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 I want to thank you for bringing so much joy into the world. And Groucho, without looking up from his soup, said, and I want to thank you for taking so much out. Frank Ferranti recalls watching Groucho give a talk at 85, less than a year before he died. Finally, somebody asked Groucho, Groucho, are you making any new Marx Brothers movies? You can hear a pin drop. He pauses and says, no, I'm answering stupid questions. Very, very weak. Elliot Gould has a more and personal memory. The last time I saw him, he had clear tubes in going into his nose and mouth. And he wasn't talking, but he took his fingers on the tubes and he looked at me. And he went like that. So that was Groucho Marx. Next stop, Wall Street. And later, making certain the grass is always greener.